This is one of the world's rarest Nismo GTRs, and you're about to see it receive the ultimate dream $18,000 detail. Boy, that escalated quickly. Here is a quick overview of the status detail it received and what you can look forward to in this video. A world-class high-end detail experience is never limited to your zip code. This Nismo GTR was shipped from New York on a state-of-the-art trailer directly to Status Detail. Unlimited Auto has moved nearly all of our out-of-state customer cars and has been terrific to work with. The trailers in their fleet can cost as much as a supercar and the drivers move exotic cars daily. This particular trailer allows the car to be carefully rolled out without anyone crawling into the car while it's still in the trailer. This ensures the car has no transport damage or swirl marks or scratches from sliding in and out of the windows. Status is not affiliated to Unlimited, by the way. We just mention them and use them because they are professional, timely, and have experience with exotic cars. The customer service from George, the owner, has been nothing short of incredible, and if you're looking to send a car to Status Detail and you're out of state, they are our number one choice and recommendation. The car arrived with just 104 miles, and it was delivered to the owner with slightly less than that, but he couldn't help himself. This car is so cool, he had to take it out for a quick drive. It's our understanding that only 30 of these cars made it to the United States, and only four in the United States are finished in this color. The Nismo edition is a $100,000 option over the standard GTR putting this car over $200,000. The high points of the Nismo package are the back bumper, the trunk, the wing, the roof, the hood, the front bumper, both fenders, and the side skirts. So nearly the entire car is made out of carbon fiber. It gets a small horsepower boost over the standard GTR. It also comes with carbon ceramic brakes, really awesome special Recaro seats, and a bunch of other little things that come as part of the Nismo package. On arrival, the car was pretty clean, and the trailers that Unlimited use are pretty close to airtight, so very little dust and things like that was on the car when it arrived. So it was actually clean enough for me to walk around the car with a spotlight and check over the paint and see what paint correction needs needed to be done. It's become rather routine for our customers to take delivery of their cars and while they're waiting for a week or two to get the car to me, they will actually look the car over with a spotlight like you're seeing in the video and kind of panic and call me and kind of freak out like this. It's simply always necessary to paint correct a new car, especially one that's this rare and this expensive that's going to the length of an extensive detail like we are going to do. The proper thing to do is make sure the paint's perfect before we do all of our hard work. When you see rotary holograms like this, that means that there was a dust nib or some kind of issue on the paint. They sanded that out and then rotary polished it, and this is the signature from their rotary polisher. We just need to now refine that to remove it. We see this on a lot of cars, especially on Porsches. The car in general is pretty covered with general Sromar these are not severe, they are not difficult to remove, and it's difficult to say how the car ended up with these on them. Based on my conversations with the owner, he never touched the car, so none of these should be from him. And based on my conversations with the owner, the dealership did literally like nothing to the car. I think he even saw it come off the trailer and then basically go into his hands. So this was probably from the manufacturing process. You're seeing that rotary hologram area again here, so it's very likely this was rotary polish, whether it was just for them fixing swirl marks at the factory or they were maybe fixing sanding marks 
um, it's all about the same. That piano black is very susceptible to scratching, so it's always pretty obvious we're going to find problems here. PPF is a is a wonderful thing to put over something like this. Again, at 100 miles, that's pretty unbelievable for, for swirl marks on a car at 100 miles. This is the worst spot on the entire car. This is a pretty big, bad sanding mark, and it's hidden in this kind of crease and groove. And remember, this is a limited run car. I think they only made 300 of these total for the entire world which means this is a very different bumper than the normal GTR bumper, which means when they were fixing this at the manufacturing plant, that's a, a, a tricky spot to polish. If you're not careful, you can burn the paint, you can bur burn the clear and uh, just have some issues. And it's a hard thing to work. If you don't have the right technique and process to remove a sanding mark like that, you can definitely cause a lot of problems. I suspect that you know, they just kind of gave up on it because they didn't want to make more damage. So they kind of did the bare minimum to, ref to refine that and then just kind of left it alone. They probably had a dust nib, removed it, and left the sanding mark. Um, we do fix this later on in the video. And again, you're seeing more of these weird rotary marks on the back bumper as well. So we're, we're dealing with a combination of kind of sanding and rotary marks throughout the car, and then just the entire thing is covered in kind of general swirl marks. Some of these things are hard to remove. Some of these things are easier to remove. Um, all of it needs to be done very carefully just because the car is so rare, the color is so rare, and all these panels are basically carbon fiber. So you don't want to have to repaint anything. You don't want to burn through clear. There's a lot on the line when you're paint correcting a car like this. I think they did a halfway decent job putting in this piece here and it wraps in pretty good here and it wraps in pretty good here because this is obviously going to get messed up pretty bad. But, you know, I still get puzzled by these OEM manufacturers when they put things in because this section here is going to be fully ruined and there's nothing on that. So, like, I still don't understand stuff like that. Same thing here. We have this OEM piece here which is probably for the normal Nissan GTR, but then the Nismo edition gets this piece down here, which sticks out further towards us and has no film on it. So it's like thought process there. I don't understand. It that makes literally no sense. An interesting thing I noticed is this vent here goes to like an intercooler or some kind of radiator. That's the vent on the left side, passenger side of the car. When we switch over to the driver's side of the car, this one is like a fake hole. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just like a big windsock, apparently. It's a little strange for a car that focuses so heavily on aerodynamics and things like that. Now, Nissan did some really interesting PPF on this car from the factory. Like, the entire front fender, like the front-facing part of that lip is all done in paint protection film. They even did a halfway decent job of wrapping it into the fender. Now, part of the problem is that they wrapped it behind this plastic uh, fender liner, so I actually have to slightly undo the uh, screws in the fender liner heat it and then pull it and remove it and you'll see a tab here also on the front fender between the fender and the front bumper kind of a weird thing we think this is to basically help vibration so the panels don't wiggle together and mess the paint up um, we can address that later in the video too and then this piece by the rocker panels is actually tucked underneath slightly into the carbon fiber so again removing this is kind of strange because the customer specifically requested that we not remove any panels on the car he didn't want anything to come off um, he didn't even want like trim to come off which is totally underst understandable. And again, this car is so rare and the parts on this car are so rare and the color is so rare that having to repaint something or redo something or get a part from like Japan would be just a nightmare. So I totally understood his concern and we were still able to do everything and wrap everything really, really meticulously so it was invisible. But sometimes you have real concerns about, you know, having a car kind of disassembled. The back bumper um, also had some PPF on it that's also tucked into the fender like edge. And I'm pretty impressed they did a nice job with that stuff, but obviously we just want to do more coverage that's going to be full body paint protection film. Removing OEM PPF is pretty easy, especially when the cars are so new like this, so we do removals like these small pieces typically for free. You'll see I'm using a heat gun. The heat basically reactivates the glue a little bit and just makes it come off a little easier. In some future videos coming up, you'll actually see me switching over to steam. Steam is a really interesting thing. I'm going to save that for the videos where I use it in. But for anyone trying to DIY this at home, you can use a steamer or a heat gun. Both work. Tools like these are very inexpensive. They're available on Amazon and they do come in handy um, if you like to DIY a lot of different things on your car. This car received our level three paint correction, which is the highest paint correction level that I currently offer. This really lets us get as close to possible to 100% perfect paint. 
And this is a big deal because we're about to do full body paint protection film on the car, so we really want to lock in perfect paint. And if there was ever a time to do that, it's gonna be right now. So we inspect everything. You can see on screen, I'm inspecting the car. I go crazy to make sure everything is perfect on a job like this. You're also gonna see a lot of one, two, and three inch polishing. This is where we spend extra time on this step. A level two correction would still have this, but we will spend more time in refinement on the little things that most people will never catch and never notice. Level three will also mean we're going to try our best to remove dust nibs and anything that's going to cause imperfections or problems in the paint protection film. We also do that in level two, but we have to cut that off at a certain point, whether there's two or three nibs, we go for it. If you have 10 or 15, we start to go a little further to really do our best to get everything out. But again, this just gets back into spending more time making the car perfect. One of the biggest things that's misunderstood about level three correction is that people think we just do a compound step, then a polish step, then a jeweling step. The reality is I basically polished the entire car for this, for this uh, paint correction process. We use Reflect and an HEO orange pad, but I do that step multiple, multiple, multiple times, more than three to four times per panel just polishing. I can vary my cut by how I manage dust in my pad. If I can resaturate with a little bit of spray of a water, that can change it. How I do pressure and how I build heat in a panel. There's lots of ways to vary cut. It's not just down to the pad and the product, it's technique too, and that's a very difficult thing to train and to show on camera. The really bad spots on the car off camera, I did use Ultra Cut and an HDO blue pad. I also did a jeweling step on the car that I did not show just because there are so many things we, we can't include in the video because it just gets a little too time consuming to film sometimes, but those things were done. The majority of the paint correction was done though with an HDO orange and reflect. So a lot of people think too closed-minded and too inside the box when they think of paint correction because they're thinking and seeing a three-step process when the reality is our quote-unquote level three process on this car, if you break it down to one panel, was like 15 to 20 steps and then timesing that through the entire car. So it's much more... Uh, in-depth and complicated than just saying level three is three steps level two is two steps that's more i want you guys to think of it more about how much time i'm going to spend in getting your car perfect and we're looking at perfect as a percentage whether it's 100 95 90 85 etc I've shown this in nearly every video of a big detail. At the end of that paint correction process, we just have so much dust. And as you know, it's very important that we clean all this off with a wash because we just can't risk any of this dust getting into the paint protection film. And we wanna do one more really thorough cleaning just to make sure there's no leftover dust or dirt that we missed in previous steps that could go into that film. Now what we've never talked about is why is there dust? Obviously the paint correction made the dust, but why is dust a byproduct of paint correction? The fast and simple answer is when you take a pad and CarPro Reflect or UltraCut and then put that as a sandwich of a pad, a product, and then paint, and you make friction and heat breaks down the polish and compound we are using until it is basically turned into dust and that dust then comes off and out of our pad, or we blow it out of our pad to make sure our pad is clean, and that is how you see all of the dust on the car. Now, we've gotten a lot of comments about other products we can use that won't make dust as bad, but what you have to remember is no matter what you do, paint correction will have a byproduct. My byproduct that I like and I can manage is dust. What people don't realize is when they take that dust factor away, the byproduct typically seeps into your pad and then makes your pad unbalanced and you end up getting this kind of sludge that builds up in the pad that you can't blow out and it's very difficult to remove unless you fully wash the pad and even then sometimes you can't fully get it out. So many of you think dust is bad and I should change but you don't realize that changing my byproduct just makes a new byproduct and that byproduct in my opinion is far worse to have to deal with and manage than dust because I'm going to do a second wash like this no matter what I do because we just need to make sure the car is like surgery clean so we can do paint protection film. After all the information I just gave you in my previous section, including that little nugget, which we've never talked about, you're probably feeling like, oh my God, you did, you miyagi me. Depending on how rushed we are on the schedule, because sometimes these cars show up slightly late, I'll actually um, not do the wheels in the first wash, so I'll just wash the paint down really, really quickly, and then I will get the car directly inside so we can start paint correcting it because we want to be able to get to our uh, PPF steps immediately because PPF is the slowest, most time-consuming part of the entire job, 
and also technically so is the paint correction. So in this case, we're actually doing our second wash here and I'm actually washing the wheels for the first time. Also, this car was barely driven when it arrived as you saw with the miles and it has CCBs, so the wheels really don't get dirty when, they're, when, when it's driven. Um, so wheels weren't a high priority, but now it's easy to wash them and you're obviously going to do wheels first, whether you're doing this step or you're doing um, just a normal wash because uh, you do not want you know the car to get water on it and then for it to sit. Either way, we're working in the shade and it's just good practice for anyone, whether you're running a detail shop or you're just you know a guy who owns a car washing it in your driveway, do wheels first. And then we're using Brake Buster here. Brake Buster just remains a staple for us. It's inexpensive, it's easy um, to buy in gallons. It's gonna last you a long time. It works on everything, including carbon ceramic brakes. I'm always gonna foam afterwards just because I think that adds lubrication, but especially guys, especially, and I can't say this enough, especially. If you have gloss black clear coated wheels, you need to be foam canning the wheel because like gloss black scratch is so easy. It's going to get swirl marks. There's no avoiding it, but it's going to build them way quicker if you just spray brake bruster and then go in there with a brush. So like I, you could even like foam it once, do half the wheel, then foam the other side and foam like then do that side too. Um, gloss black wheels are so hard to take care of. I don't recommend them. If you are optioning a car, do not get gloss black wheels. They're very difficult to take care of. They look great but they're super hard to take care of. Um, matte black and satin black, much, much better ideas. Uh, if you're gonna be optioning your car, you're buying aftermarket wheels. Just be aware if you do gloss black wheels, they're gonna get swirl marks. It's impossible to stop it. All of the steps we take to make your car perfect matter, but some of the steps are more important than others. And this wash step actually on camera and while you're watching this probably doesn't seem that important, but I would argue it's one of the most important steps of the entire detail. And right now you'll see me taking a picture for Instagram. If you don't follow our Instagram, check it out. I do tons of content on Instagram. If you're, you know, hurting for content on YouTube because you're like, man, you don't post enough on YouTube, which is true, I don't. But if you want more content, guys, I post almost seven days a week on Instagram through Instagram stories. So that's a great way to follow us when we're not on YouTube. And uh, you'll see I'm, I'm always taking pictures of stuff and posting it. If we do the first wash and the decontamination step perfectly, we can do the paint correction step perfectly. We can buy the right film, which is S-Tech film, the most clear film available on the market. We can put the right ceramic coatings on the car, which are G-Technic coatings. You can have world-class PPF installers like Paul and myself. All of that can come together perfectly to make an amazing, perfect car. But if I screw this wash up, or if I rush this wash and go not meticulously and methodically and rinsing everything and very specifically rinsing out different jams and seams to make sure that absolutely absolutely nothing will come out of those when I spray water on it later to put the film on the car, then I will get all kinds of dirt and dust all over the place that's gonna go into the film. When you have to get that out of the film, you gotta pull it back and you're gonna get adhesive lines in the panels you're working, which, you know, it's possible to get adhesive lines in a car if you do a full body. No, no one's gonna tell you that it's never gonna happen, but if it happens every panel because I have to pry dust out of it, that's obviously less than an ideal of a situation. So if I don't do this wash perfectly and methodically and really take my time with it, it can lead, for example, to me installing a hood, what I think perfectly until I notice there's a speck of dust in the center of that hood. Noticing something like that feels a lot like this. <laughs> That might have felt like a pretty funny joke, but all the PPF installers watching this know that that one hit a little too close to home. You have to take your time here. So again, for people who do PPF or detail shops that work on cars that are getting PPF, because sometimes these shops contract everything out and they never touch the car. So they're disconnected from the, from the process and they don't understand how important this step is. Trust me, your PPF contractor will thank you when you do the extra mile during this wash because their job is gonna go way smoother, way faster, more relaxed. When you're relaxed doing PPF, you do better work. So it kind of goes back to the saying that I've mentioned in some of my other videos. How you do anything is how you do everything. And a lot of people will look at some of these steps and whether they're customers or whether they're you know shop owners or, or actual detailers, and say, well, you know, I don't believe that. No, some stuff doesn't matter. Like you can just go through those steps quickly because this doesn't matter and you'll just do that later. It's like to us, it all matters. And that's typically why we charge more money because we spend a lot of time doing your car. To do it perfectly, it's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna take a lot of, you know, energy. It's gonna take a lot of methodical work that a lot of people won't put into it. So we're using S-Tech PPF for all the reasons you already know if you're a follower of the channel. If you're new to the channel, you can check out a video I made where I compare Expel to S-Tech or you can also call it Stec. S-Tech film is the most clear film on the market. It has a built-in ceramic coating that we don't rely on, but it's nice that it has it. We still ceramic coat over that. Uh, it's very, very stretchy, which is gonna be super cool to see in some of the videos I have coming up because we're gonna do some crazy advanced PPF stuff that we're gonna do with steam and stretching and it's crazy. 
Not all films can do that. We've talked to a lot of installers about this too, and they will admit that their films are not able to do that. One of those is a friend of mine who I'm not going to name for just his own privacy, but uh, he, we have honest conversations about this stuff all the time. And uh, yeah, Aztec film is very, very good. It's very, it's very different from a lot of the films that are on the market. A lot of people might watch these videos, especially if they're new to the channel, and wonder why did people ship a car to us? Like that's crazy. The shipping cost has to be really expensive. They could have put that shipping cost into the cost of you know the detail locally. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about that because the main reason is paint protection film. You, you obviously ship a car to me because you want the ceramic coatings we do, the paint correction we do, especially um, on new cars because our paint correction process is clearly pretty extreme. If you think this was extreme, you should see some of our other videos where we fix really bad stuff. And you know, all of these things are a culmination of why people ship cars to us, but paint protection film is the main one. Paint protection film, ladies and gentlemen, is extremely difficult to do perfectly. And there's the, the word perfectly is so hard to even break down for someone to understand what that means to me because for a lot of people perfectly just means like putting it on with no hair or dust in the film but to us perfectly means putting it on perfectly with all with all those things no hair no dust no defects no adhesive lines which is, can be very difficult to do um, but we're also bulk cutting so there's you know the maximum effort going into not being able to see seams or lines we're tucking things everywhere we can so you cannot see the edge of a, a edge of the paint protection film it's just tucked behind rubber gaskets and into door jams and into the fenders and into the hoods and shoving it in and behind the headlights and we don't want you to be able to see any of that stuff the car should look just like it has nothing on it and one of the main reasons you you know need Aztec film is because it's so optically clear and doesn't add orange peel is that when you go to those lengths to get rid of the appearance of film being on the car the only thing left to give it away is how the panel actually appears. And if it appears to have tremendously bad orange peel, like some of the films out there that we've made a video about, like the Expel vs. Aztec video, those films are why we hated, you know, PPF from a, a day one and a long time ago, because I would paint correct a car, we would do a full front on it, and then the front would look worse than the back, and that was really frustrating. You don't have that problem with Aztec, so you, you obviously have to use the right film on top of doing all of these other things right. And then, of course, on top of that, when you combine our paint correction process, then the film, then you have the paint looking the best it possibly can, but also the paint correction work will show through the film because the film's not hiding it with tremendous orange peel, and then the film, um, even though it's already kind of got a built-in ceramic coating, really takes well um, and really accepts the ceramic that we put, the G-Technic ceramic, it accepts that really well too, which gives us really proper hydrophobics for years and years and years, but even adds more gloss. So all of this system comes together as kind of a unified, like cohesive system that works really, really well together. And that's kind of what the status detail experience is, not to mention all the customer service we do and all the other stuff. The problems you'll experience is the way I install on a car well, it's expensive. It's expensive to do something right and perfect. Now, I follow a lot of uh, paint protection film groups on Facebook and all over the place, and I even have people commenting in my videos sometimes saying that we're too much money, and they are also paint protection film installers. Most of them are angry uh, paint protection film installers who install other brands that aren't S-Tech, so that's mainly why they're triggered, and they're leaving the virtual comment equivalent of this. You know, we're like, hey, we're not talking about it. Say what you're saying. Don't say what you're saying. But anyways, a lot of these people are upset because they can't charge what we charge. Now, I fully understand, guys, whether you're a customer or you are a installer somewhere, that you know people have to charge less money in certain markets because they are unable to charge a lot of money to do it the way they want to. So a lot of these companies are capable of installing at the level we might be installing at, but they don't have the customer base where they can charge an extra three or $4,000 a car to spend the time to do it that way. So they are inherently stuck in their market. And that's an unfortunate thing to be if you feel like you have the skills and techniques to do really crazy stuff. We only operate in this environment. So every car I do, I do to the highest standard, which means we operate on a day-to-day -day basis at the highest level where we charge this much money and this is what we do. So when someone does get a job like that, it's difficult for them because they're doing it like for the first time all year. That's like maybe they do like one every other month. We do one every day. Like every day I walk into the shop, I'm doing something to the highest level because that's what we're paid to do. That's what status detail represents. We do the best detailing in the world. So it can be really hard to find what we offer 
because a lot of the shops that might be able to offer it are unable to because their average customer will never charge this much. If they raise their pricing to this level, they would lose all their customer base and go out of business because everyone would think they're nuts for having the price so high. So it's hard to find what we do because you have to find a person who operates in this market and there's very few of us, honestly, I think in the United States that actually do that. I would argue among those people that there's very few of those people that are like me who are essentially a one-man show that wear all the hats and do all of the work, the paint protection film, Paul helps, um, but I also do almost all of the installations myself now. Paul is great. He's still kind of helping me do some stuff, and it's so much work to do a full body by yourself, so it's great to have help. Um, but I am very good at paint protection film now, so to have someone be as good as I am in my standards of my film, my paint correction, my decon, my ceramic, just the overall attention to detail, detail and the overall customer service you get, what we offer is just off-the-charts rare um, and that's why people ship cars to us. Now, on top of that, you have to be so careful, guys, when you own cars that are exotic and rare. This car is so rare that this customer had a couple shops reach out to him, and he reached out to them and said, like, hey, what's the price on this? And shops are so happy to give you pricing on these where they'll go, oh, I'll, give, I'll do the detail for half off. I've never done one of those. I want to do more work like that. I can't break into that network of cars because we only do these cars and these customers only pay this much. And that car is like only two in America. So I'll do it for half off. Be very cautious of this. This is a scary thing. Like nine times out of 10, you maybe need to run away from that person. So let's flip the flip the script on that. Customers then come to me and say, well, will you do that? And I say, no, I will charge you more money. I'm gonna charge you more money than my normal price for this car because this car is more difficult to do than like a standard 992, you know, C2S. Like this is more work. The bumpers alone take like three to four time that it would take to do a normal 992 front bumper and back bumper. Like this car is crazy complicated to do. Why would I charge you less for that? Like you're coming for expertise to have your car done perfect and you're asking for like a 50% discount. Like that's crazy. Then you dig in deeper, right? Some of these shops go, oh, well, we'll, we'll do the bottom of the car for free. There's carbon fiber on the bottom. We'll do that for free. And then it's like, okay, well you research that and look into it. And the sections on the bottom that have carbon fiber that they're referring to are right next to the catalytic converter and will literally either A, catch on fire or just flat out melt off and smell terrible as it's melting because it's close to something that's too hot. Film is not designed to be next to something excruciatingly hot like a, like a catalytic converter or a header or a downpipe. So this is when these shops go like into the dire mode of like, oh, well, like we'll just, we'll do all this stuff for free and we'll give you extra free stuff, but they don't even know what they're offering to the detriment to the customer who's gonna have to deal with this problem after the fact when his <laughs> bottom of his car starts melting. So you have to be careful. And in my opinion, it's a red flag if someone says, oh, we'll do it for half off or we'll do it for you know 25% off or I'll do it for full price, but I'll give you this, this, and this for free on the side. Like I'll never do that because we are doing this car perfectly. Our time is worth what it's worth. The detail is worth what it's worth. When a car is more complicated, it needs more time. I will charge for my time. That's what it'll take to do your car. That's just like an honest, proper way of billing a job. So there's, there's a reason that companies do it for that little and it's because they are not as good or not as experienced and they're trying really hard to basically win your business over with a price. I know I don't need to win them over with the price. I need to price it for what it is, for what it takes for me to do this job, no matter how long it takes, even if it's nine days, 10 days, 12 days, if it's a complicated car, we win the customer over with our experience, with our talent, with our skill, with our customer service, with our product knowledge. All of these things come together to win the customer over. I just wanted to take a quick second to really just say thanks to Paul because Paul has been a really fantastic person. He has basically been training me for like a year or two. And in the course of that, he's been doing amazing work on all the cars for all our customers. And he's been training me basically in the process of doing that. And he was always kind of my insurance policy. So if I wanted to work on something that was going to be difficult and I was unable to do it, then I always knew Paul would be able to do that panel. So I could kind of jump out of my comfort zone, take a risk on something. If I wasn't happy with it, I would rip that panel off and I would have Paul do it. And we did a lot of stuff that way. We went through a lot of film, threw a lot, threw away a lot of film, but I always knew Paul had my back if I was going to have a hard time. So fast forward about two years or so now into this where I'm very, very good at this. Paul is still definitely going nowhere. He's way too, you know, awesome to have, uh, to, to not have around. 
and uh, he'll always be helping me on cars just because, like I said earlier, it's way too much work to do a full body completely by yourself. So Paul's always going to be helping on cars. But now today where I am is that I'm very comfortable with this. I'm very, very good at doing paint protection film. And once I reach that like baseline where I collectively have all of the basics like in my tool bag of how to do PPF, now we're getting into this really crazy world of advanced PPF where we're doing lots of wild stuff with steam, which you're going to see in videos coming soon. And I really encourage you guys, if you're a PPF, PPF installer or if you're just a PPF like enthusiast and you find this stuff fascinating or you find detailing fascinating definitely subscribe to this channel I strive to be the best detailer in the world I try to show that to you guys in the videos um, but I think this is going to be one of the best resources on YouTube for advanced paint protection film information and just to be showing advanced PPF installations um, and a lot of that's going to be rolling out through coming videos just because now I am fully like enthralled in that and I'm like obviously a little bit OCD about stuff. And once I kind of latch on to something, I go a little overboard. So what you're going to probably witness over the next 12 months or longer is going to be like me showing you guys the process of me going into like crazy advanced PPF. And if you're into that kind of stuff or you're in the industry and want to learn, this is going to be a great resource, especially if you're learning because you're going to learn for free. There is so much that I simply can't show you in many of our videos. And a lot of things happened on the interior of this car that we just didn't show. But we did kind of once over the interior, clean everything, make sure it was in perfect condition. And then we also ceramic coated basically every surface of the inside of the car. It's easy to forget as a viewer and even as me as a person who filmed all this, did the work and now is doing the edit. It's easy to forget that details like this on this car are somewhere around 70 hours long and I film maybe 20 to 30 hours of video content of that and then I have to edit that down typically into about a 30 to 40 minute video and that is very very difficult to do and make it entertaining and like watchable. So simply put we can't end up using all the footage that we shot and then there's some things I just don't shoot at all because we just have to make good time through the process of the detail because we have a schedule to maintain and a lot of things don't get shown. So when you see how expensive the details are and you're thinking man he didn't do this or that or that it's like we probably did those things we just didn't show you those on camera and uh, I just want to mention that about the interior because we showed very little interior work for this car. A super important note is when you buy a brand new car like this and you do have all these wrappers and things on the car please guys please keep these especially the ones for your seat your steering wheel and if there's one for the shifter keep that as well. When you bring your car into service I want you to put these covers back on your car and it'll just protect it dealerships are not very careful unfortunately and the technicians that move your cars and the porters that move your cars are not very careful unfortunately they will have dirty clothes they will have dirty hands especially with alcantara seats that are red like this they're going to get very dirty very quickly when you go into a service if they're not being careful and they will virtually do nothing to assist you or help you once that's happened so you have to be super proactive and you have to put all of this protective stuff back in the car to just to make sure you have you know an, an easy life when you're going into the service department or getting oil changes done or anything like that. Having the opportunity to work on a car like this is incredible. Especially when I think all the way back to when I started this business and we didn't work on very special cars all the time, but we had this dream that we were going to build a company that was gonna work on the most rare, most exclusive exotic cars in the world and deliver the highest level detailing possible in the world. Back then, I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to reach that destination. I just knew that if I put work in every single day, that we would get there one day. And it's my absolute pleasure to be able to work on a car like this and then be able to film it, edit this, and then be able to share all of that with you guys who are the viewers and the subscribers of the channel. It's even more crazy to think about how good we are today and what we can deliver to you today and what that'll look like in five years or in 10 years because now I'm doing all the more insane advanced stuff and I'm always just pushing. There's, there's never a point in which I am satisfied and I stop working on being better at something. That's why I like to think that this channel will kind of be the pinnacle of detailing and it'll kind of be the place for innovation because if you continue to push you'll continue to discover what's next and what's more and what's better if you made it this far into the video thank you so much for watching our videos it's you guys and girls who watch the videos to this point in the video and then want to subscribe that is why the videos get so many views that's why we're a 25,000 sub channel that gets you know 200,000 500,000 800,000 view videos it's because of awesome viewers like you guys. So if you want more of this stuff, definitely subscribe to the channel. We have lots of cool videos coming. Around 75, maybe even 80% of our customer base is out of state now. So this is a extremely common thing to send your car to us. And I can make that process very, very easy and smooth for you because I know it can sound scary to ship a car here, but it is 
incredibly easy, especially when we use unlimited auto. And you will see in the very end here, unlimited auto is loading the car back up because when we were finished, of course, the car had to go back to the owner. That's gonna wrap this video up, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video real soon.